So Timothy and I got to pray with her and tell her about our youth night here, tell her about possibly having a hip-hop night over there, a uh, clean hip-hop night, you know, something like that. And, and she said she'd, she'd just love it. She embraced the idea. She's coming to have lunch with me next week. Uh, this week we had lunch with the United Way. Um, I, I got a couple of awards up at the Iacocca Towers, and there were about seven people who controlled a lot of funds in the valley for the uh, Trexler Fund and different funds like that, things that I don't know a lot about, but, but, but people who have a lot of grants and stuff like that, and they came and visited with me, and we got to pray with them, and then we met with uh, some other people too. So just, just to let you know that our name is out there. Uh, I have a meeting with the uh, mayor out next week, the assistant mayor, uh, Hank Anoni, Ed Pulaski, Louis from the Louis uh, restaurant. Anybody who's running for mayor is, is courting me, man. I feel like I feel I feel like a, you know, I feel like some woman. Everybody's trying to court me. They want to take me to lunch, you know. So uh, I'm having lobster on next week. And I'm, I'm having the, they they they're gonna pay if they want to talk to me, you know. Uh, this, I'm telling you, man. And I may take some of you with me. And say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my nine friends have to come too, you know. So. Uh, Anyway, so I, I just, I just kind of wanted to motivate you to that a little bit, kind of let you know what's going on, okay? Thanks for switching up a little bit. You know, it makes it good. Diversity is good, isn't it? Yeah. You ever get in a rut? Huh? Anybody have a comfortable chair at home? Anybody got a pair of sneaks at home? Your wife tells you they stink. People around you know they stink. You sometimes know they stink, but you're in denial, and that's not a river in Egypt, right? <laughs> But, but you wear them because you just love the way, because you've kind of carved a groove in them, right? But sometimes those seats will get like that. They, 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 they got like an imprint of your little tail on them. You know, you need to change around every once in a while. It, it just, you know, helps them to switch up a little bit, okay? <laughs> you didn't laugh at that. Anyway, <laughs> you didn't laugh at that. Do me a favor, turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. I want to share something with you. Tonight I want to continue on with the theme of transformation. Now this morning, many of you, and by the way, if you weren't here this morning, get a tape. And, and for last week, get a tape too. It costs you a buck up there, best dollar you ever spent. Because what it is, is it's showing how many of us think of the word change. You say, you know what, we tell our children, if you don't change your attitude, I'm going to punish you. If you, if you don't change that, 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 that behavior, I'm going to punish you. If you don't change that, if you don't get your grades and change that grade, I'm going to write. And we're always changing. And we're asking, modify this and you'll get this. We're telling an employee, if you don't change your attitude, you're going to get fired. If you don't change when you get here, if you don't change, and we ask people to modify, 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 modify behavior, and we call it change. And we begin to get to think that that's what we do to be a good believer. It's just change. You know, I look like the pastor, wear a silk tie, dress appropriately. If I don't dress appropriately, I can be hip as long as I say the right things. Are you washed in the blood? Has the fountain touched your life? Praise God. You know what I mean? You say, cause praise God. You know what I mean? You could, you could pronounce it any way you want, you know, but it sounds cool. We just learn the game, don't we? We're, basically, we can become chameleons to change. Somebody say amen or say something. We, we can become anything we need to become in order to suffice those people that have expectations for us. And still, that's just called change. Transformation, the word transformation means when I change from the inside out, the very essence of who I am begins to change. In other words, that, that I don't become like a 57 car that was restored. It's still a 57 Chevy. But I become something I've never been. Did anybody hear that? How many of you had a great time walking your life at one point? I'm talking about when you were on fire, stuff was moving, you knew, man, man, you were hungry and people put groceries on your porch and, and, and you needed some money and a check came in the mail and needed a refrigerator and it was on your porch and you needed a car and somebody gave, come on, how many of you have experienced some great high times in the Lord? And how many have ever said this, man, Pastor Jim, if you didn't know me when I was at the top of my game, oh man, I was serving, I was fasting, I was praying, I was worshiping. Anybody ever been there? And yet, why'd you fall? If things were so good when you were at the top of your game with Jesus, why'd you fall? What happened to make you fall? So people say, man, if I could just get back to where I was, how about if you get back to where you never was? How about if you become something you never were? How about if you do things you never did, try things you've never done in order to go places you've never gone before in Christ? Are you following me tonight? You see, change versus metamorphosis. Change versus transformation. This world will get you to change. They'll get you to wear something nice, wear something pretty, wear something cool. And you can look the look and be acceptable. 
But in Christ, sometimes we try to play that same chameleon game. And God wants us to metamorphosize. He wants, to he wants us to change completely who we are. Look at the scripture. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train. When he ascended on high, leave that right there. He, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Leave it right there. One of the most complicated scriptures that you will ever read. And you need to go historically and politically and culturally in order to understand it. Because what he's saying is, is that here the Apostle Paul is using a military illustration to show you and I something. He's using a military illustration. You see in those times, and I said it this morning, I'll say it again because I feel like it. But, but I told you this morning how, how they would send their armies out. And you're my army. And we'd send you out. We would send you out except me being one of the uh, kings. I would go out with you as you know. I wouldn't be watching Bathsheba from a roof. I'd be with you. So anyway, so, so here, we, they would send the armies out, and the armies would conquer the Moabites, or whoever they were conquering, and they'd, they'd take the spoils and take all their oxen, take all their young men and women, take all their pearls and their gold and their jewelry, and they'd, they'd stash them and put them on donkeys and oxen and bring them, and then they'd march all, their sh all of their soldiers in with all their stuff and all their swords, and behind them is going to be all the slaves they captured, and then all the booty. And no, don't change that around. I'm talking about booty here. I'm talking about gold and silver. Not BET, VH1, or music videos. Everybody clear? The booty. What was taken from the enemy, they, they bring it in. And can you imagine with your mind this procession with all these generals that have just conquered? And behind them all the soldiers that made the conquer. And behind them all the slaves and all the people that they conquered. Bare and beaten up and coming in line by line. And behind them all their stuff. They took from them. And just when they approached the city, the general would stop everyone and say, send me a servant to the king. And they'd ride up and they'd tell the king, king, the spoils are yours. The battle has been won. Come and ride us in. And he would ride out on his horse and ride in and all the people would gather. And he would ride in. And as he was coming in, he'd take, he'd take gold and throw it at people. And he'd give gifts to men and women. Here, take this. Take some pearls for you. Here, take the oxen for you. Here, take this for you. And they would give praise because he won the war. Anybody follow me? So what you're seeing here, although we don't understand it, is a militaristic term for what Jesus did between the hours when he was in the tomb and he resurrected. Somebody say amen. Everybody thinks he was sleeping in that hole. But I'll tell you something. It says that this is why it says, He who ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Now take me to the next verse, 9. And then take me back up to 8 in a moment. What does he ascend it means except that he also descended into the lower parts or the lower regions of the earth. He went down to the lower parts. In other words, that he went down and he went into Hades and he said, that belongs to me. That belongs to me. That belongs to me. Hate, that belongs to me. Jealousy, that belongs to me. It's not going to control my people no more. He said, I've won over sin. I've won over death. I'm going to resurrect. He said, I want my stuff back because when I resurrect, when I I come out of here, I'm going to lead all this captive, and it's going to follow me like a king saying, here's gifts for you. Amen. Only four of you got that? That's deep. You follow me? Where's this power come from? Folks, I told you that one of the key reasons that we refuse to change is ignorance of the promises of God, ignorance of the Word of God. We sometimes isolate ourselves. We listen to every single doctrine that we can, and before you know it, we're listening to Creflo Dollar, his mama, this, that, everybody. And if you like him, good for you. I'm glad you got Sky Angel. Watch what you watch. Everything that says Sky and everything that says Angel ain't from Jesus. You get all confused watching every single sermon that comes along. It may sound good. It may have a little bit of truth and a whole lot of lie. It is what it is what it is. Sorry if I stepped on your little toes. I got Sky Angel, Pastor Jim. What are you going to get? Well, let me see. I'm not getting that. Last thing I need is every nut and freak preaching at me all day long. Before you know it, 
I'm hanging on a fire wire, pouring, pouring acid over myself, letting a snake bite me in my lip, uh, uh, pouring kerosene on me, dousing myself with a flame. Oh, yeah, I learned this last night on Sky Angel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Max Licato in his book, it says this is why they call him Savior, says this. No wonder they call him Savior. The cross, this, the cross rests on the timeline of history like a compelling diamond. Its strategy summons all sufferers. Its absurdity attracts all cynics. Its hope lures all searchers. History has idolized it and despised it. Gold plated it and history has also burned it. Worn it and yet trashed it. History has done everything but ignore it. That's the one option the cross does not offer. No one can ignore it. You cannot ignore a piece of lumber that suspends on the greatest claim in history. It's the bottom line. It's sobering. It's the account of truth. It's the history. It's the hinge of history. If not, it would be history's hoax. Folks, what am I telling you? We celebrate Easter. And everybody has this great Easter message. He's alive this Sunday. Worship with us. He's alive indeed. But they never tell you what he did. By the time he was Friday and Sunday, what did he do? It says he led captivity captive. He took back what the devil stole from us. He conquered death. He conquered sin. And he conquered the grave. And he conquered hell. And he went down. He said, I take them keys that belong to me. And then he came back up and he says, and as he came like a king, he gave gifts to him and he says, there's the keys. You who got fear, here, fear no more. You who got jealousy, be jealous no more. Are you follow me. You can't transform till you know the truth. You can't walk in the ways of the world and walk in the ways of the Lord. You follow me? What is this power of knowing what Jesus did while he was in the tomb? What's this power? What's this power do for you? Number one, the first thing you can do. You can experience hope that will leave you about. Number one. You can experience hope that will leave you about. How many of you have a doubt? Come on, man. What's up? You got all the information. I know 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 all the information. When I got all the information, I got all the information. I got all the information. Better wrong. We need to know all the stuff. Faith is not a question anymore. Then a man can't trust me and let him walk. We got to learn the mystery. When you have this power that you believe that Jesus led captivity captive, do you know what that says? It says you led captivity captive. He said everything that I hold you back, everything that I hold you in sin, anything that I stop him, anything that I stab him, anything that I hold you back, he said, I took it captive, it's mine. Somebody said that, do you understand that? He said, it ain't got you no more, it's mine. You feel that? It's mine. I told that back from there. They may stand my people this way from the wall. Jealousy, greed, envy, racism. You're not standing my people in the wall. This is mine. You counterfeit it something that I wanted to make beautiful. I said diversity, not racism. You follow me? You can be incensed with the world with the beauty of color. Nothing makes it like one. Well, Matthew 28, 5, 6, and 8. I love this one here. This is point number one. You can experience hope that will leave you doubt. When you believe in the word of God, when you believe in what happened between Friday and Sunday, when you believe in something more than Jesus left an empty tomb, and then he, he, he led captivity captive, and he brought back in his train all those things that were taken from him. He went back and he took back and the devil stole from him. But the man just said to the woman, do not be afraid. Afraid of the unknown. Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who will crucify the next sex. And then he is not here. He has heard the justice. He said, come and see the place where he lay. Verse 8. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples that the disciples did not believe them. Are you following me? Scared. How many of you have had times of doubt? Come on, man, you doubt, man. I mean, what you gonna take if I transform it? Leave everything I got, we have to leave my pity. But I told you about the man this morning. The man has been powerless for eight years. And Jesus said, if he wanted to heal, he said, what do you mean? Of course I want to heal. It's been for eight years. But if he really wanted to heal, because if I heal, you got to pick that man and get the job, you know. Ooh. You don't want to hand out to Jesus, too? If I heal, you got to stand up and walk in him. And you ain't going to give me no bread no more. You just forgot about the welfare. Welfare now. Come on now. Will he? He can relieve your doubts. Thomas, we all know the story of Thomas. He said, Lord, unless I see the man watching my hand, I will not believe. Unless I see the strong inside, I will not believe. He said, I'm asking the Lord. It's okay, Lord. I don't need you. But you really know the power of God to relieve your doubts. How many of you don't change because you just can't get doubt? Well, this is really like being free. I don't know how to be dysfunctional. I don't know how to be manipulated. I don't know how to be a player and a liar. I don't know how to mess around with other people's women. What's going to happen when I genuinely love? What's going to happen when I just want to fall in love with one person and love her till the end of time? What will happen then? I don't know how to do that. I just got to screw around with anything I see. You follow me? Number one. The second thing, we understand this power that comes between the hours of Friday and Sunday. We understand that he led captivity captive. He took the bounty away from those in Hades. He says he preached to the ones in paradise. As long as you're free, y'all come with me. And then he looked at the other ones and he said, you, you're going to remain there for eternity. You lied to my people. You held them down in jealousy. You held them down. You always kept them down. You always talked them down. You devalued them. You put them in the devil's account. You put them in the city. You'll stay here forever. He said, but all the rest of this is mine. Come with me. I'm the king. I'm going to get away now. Isn't that deep? The second thing he did, you can experience grace that forgives your failures. How many of you failed? Come on now. You failed. The servant, Luke 22, 54 through 57. Please. Luke 22, 54 through 57. They're seeing him. They led him away and took him into a house. He made happy. Peter followed at. Peter followed at. Peter followed at. Peter followed at a distance. Hmm. What's friend? Next. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and they sat down together, Peter sat down with them. People heard the fire. He said, warm. And the servant fell asleep there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. Next verse. Then he denied, Woman, I do not know him, he said. Next verse. A little while someone else saw him and said, You also are well man. Man, I am not Peter replied. Come on. About an hour later, another said, Certainly this fellow woman him, that he is a Galilean. Sixty. Peter, Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. You see what I'm talking about here? You can experience forgiveness from the failures. How many of you are embarrassed because you dropped the ball? Embarrassed because your pastor found out. Many people come here, remember, the last one that they were talking to was me. Don't you know when you trust somebody else, they trust somebody else, who trust somebody else, who trust somebody else, who trust somebody else, who trust me? Before you get home from the phone call, I know already. Seriously. I heard it through the 
quit binding only on the temptations. That was from the Bible. Seriously, folks. But how many of you, Lord, look, know that, that you can experience grace that forgives your failure? We are right now living. I want you to imagine right now. All of you got some sin in your life. But right now, we are what they call in a dispensation. Dispensation, think of a picture. A picture, full picture. And the picture is full of grace. He said, I'm pouring this out. Well, how long does the dispensation last? Till I want to, till I come back. When I come back, picture's over. No more grace. I'm here now. Whatever you're caught with, you got to pay with. You want grace? Get it now. You got all the grace you can have. I'm dispensing grace. And that's basically is what he's saying. Folks, how many of you got failure, man? Do you want to transform? Give it up. Come on, man. Fess up to it. I fell. I dropped. I dropped the ball. I lost it. I got high. I did this. I got... So what? Who in here is going to judge you? Who in here is going to throw stones at you? Who in here has not been there? Who, is, who in here has not had an hour, moment of weakness? Who in here has not been there, man? I mean, I really felt the pains of, of, of something that controls you on the inside, that yanking on your emotions, trying to make you fall down, trying to make you angry. Who has not been there? I'm not giving you a license to sin. I'm giving you a license to receive grace and let this out before it haunts you in your belly and sticks inside there and becomes a seed and a root of bitterness and a little hiding thing that you do when then you start walking two walks and then you become a double-minded man that's unstable in all his or her ways. I'm trying to tell you, this is grace time. It's time to set it free. Let it wash out and let the Lord dispense the living water and let it wash away. That's what the power of the cross is. The power to receive forgiveness of failure is now, folks. It may not be here tomorrow. It may not be here the next day. But the power to receive failure, forgiveness from failure is now. How many of you have failed? Come on, look at my hand. But I refuse to stay this way. Amen. Hmm. You ever see an etch a sketch? You can draw stuff on them. And they just go like this. And it's ready to go again. That's the sweetest expression of grace I know. What did you do wrong? Okay, here, start again. Come on now. What did you do wrong? It's ready to go. Oh, man, that looks bad. Hold up. Here, start again. Grace. Grace is not a license to sin. It's a license to receive grace. Not a license to do what I want because at the end of the day I could just shake it. No. God is saying, look, man, when I went down there and led captivity captive, he said, I won over sin, death, and hell. Do you understand that? I won over sin, I won over death, and I won over hell. He says, I won that. And he said, now you've been saved, now start walking in this. Come on. How many of you have been a long time since you confessed the sin? Come on, come on now, straight up, be honest. I mean, hey, listen, like, you know, I don't do nothing wrong. I get to church through my offering, and I guess not, not give my offering. Is that a sin? Well, then I guess I sinned a little. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Come on now, right? And then we goof on the Catholics, right? Oh, they go every week, and they just say, Father, forgive me for I've done this, and then go out and get high. Get drunk, lay somebody, and come back next Saturday and do the same thing. Isn't that nice? And yet we got this whole a chameleon thing going on where we come in and act all righteous. And yet, when's the last time we confessed? When's the last time we came to an altar? Well, I'm going to go up there, you know, I don't want nobody to think I need help. That's pride. When's the last time that we came to an altar and broke a kneecap? I'm not talking email, I'm talking knee mail. And got on our knees and said, Jesus, touch me. Jesus, help me, for I have sinned. Jesus, listen, I don't need a priest because you are the one mediator between God and man, the Lord Christ Jesus. But listen, Jesus, we need to talk because I've been doing some things wrong. I've been thinking some things against my wife. I've been thinking about another woman. I've been thinking about another man. I've been lying again. I've been stealing again. I've been cheating again. I got high. I did this. I did that. Lord, I did this. Lord, I'm falling. And I say, Father, please dispense your grace on me. Lord, shake me through your Holy Spirit like you do an extra sketch and let that go away. Let let the guilt go away. But some of you, what happens is you never let the answer sketch be shaken by the Holy Spirit. And all you ever see is your
your sin written down one on top of the other he said let me shake you let me love you let me hold you let me hold your life and let me let you know what grace is joy unspeakable and full of glory let me shake you until you tremble in my arms and you feel my love and grace and all your sins are washed away you follow me transformation Come get some, man. Or sit back there like this for five years like, well, I hope he knows I'm perfect. Well, I've been faithful and uh, that's that. Bless the Lord. And then as you get cooler and older, turn the O into an A. And then we really think, you go, bless the Lord. Jesus don't like swine. He was a Jew. You know that. It's Lord, not lard. But you can make it sound cool, can't you? You know what else you can conquer? The power of knowing what Jesus did. You can conquer. Hmm. You can experience courage that will conquer your fears. Number three is that you can experience courage. Which you got to change. Huh? Remember this morning? A wonderful story in the book of John I told you. A man had been paralyzed 38 years. 38 years. He's at the pool. He said, Master, every time I try to get in, somebody gets in front of me. 38 years. 38 years, you ain't made it to that pool yet. I'd have had a stick. I'd have been tripping people. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm just telling you like I think. Okay, I'm fine. I'm from North Philly. I mean, listen to me. 38 years you've been screwed up like this? After three months, I'd have figured out, listen, I'm going to crawl under the woods, get some twigs, set a couple of traps up. When these, when these paralyzed people go, I'm going to knock them down, trip them, and I'm going to get to the pool first. But not this guy. Master, it's been 38 years. I've been trying to get to the pool. And it's just I can't get it. Every time that the pool is stirred, it seems like somebody jumps in and runs before me, and they get healed. And Jesus said, do you really want to be healed? What kind of question is that? I've been sick 38 years. But do you really want to be healed or do you like being dysfunctional? Maybe you like the way you are. Pity, huh? I'm just a poor Puerto Rican. Please have pity on me. Please have pity on me. i just poor Puerto Rican people. Everybody treats us bad. Only people got it worse than us is black people. Please feel sorry for us. Jesus said, you know, if I make you well, you're going to have to get a job. You're going to have to lose all them friends that you've been dope fainting with. Come on now. Somebody say amen or me or my or ouch. Either one will work in this setting. You follow me? Number three is that you can experience courage to conquer your fears. When you know the truth and you say, what did Jesus do between Friday and Sunday? He led captivity captive. What's that mean, Pastor Jim? What has held you captive? Is it drugs? He led it captive. Is it lying? He led it captive. Is it jealousy? He led it captive. Is it hate? He led it captive. Is it resentment? He led it captive. Right? Is it a sexual sin? He led it captive. Is it death? He won over that. He led it captive. Is it hell? He led it captive. Is it the afterlife? He led it captive. He resurrected. He did it all. He, listen, he led captivity captive. Whatever has held you bound, he said, I own that. Why are you scared of this way? He said, I own that. That's mine. That came back on my train following me as me as the king. He said, he said, I descended and I took the keys and give me back those keys. You no longer have control or bondage over my people. And then he said, he started heading. He started ascending and going higher and higher. He said, and as he did, he gave gifts to men. He said, here, this is yours. Here, this is yours. Fear no more. Have power. Get your courage back. He ain't so big after all. You follow me? Come on now, jump on this. You can experience courage. And number four, you can experience life that overcomes death. You see, many of us are scared. Y'all kids don't feel it now, but us older folks fear it. Uh, I used to jump out of bed and I'll roll out. Used to leap out of bed and I roll out sideways and I get on my knees and my wife thinks I'm praying. I'm just trying to get up off the floor. It looks spiritual. That's just a 48-year-old man trying to get up off the floor, get them knees and say, come on, with some oil get down here, please. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? 
you can experience the life that overcomes this. First Peter 1 3. Put that on the board for me. First Peter 1 3 and 4. First Peter 1 3 and 4. I want to I want to illustrate this. Praise be to God and uh, and uh, to, uh, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope. A living hope. Not a dying hope but into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4 please. And into an inheritance that can never perish never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. In other words, in other words, uh, uh, in Corinthians, it says, though these bodies are perishing and wasting away, we know that we're becoming new and being transformed into what God has intended us to be. So my body may be getting older, but my eternity has already begun. Not when I die, but right now, when I said yes to Jesus, I've already begun my eternity. I got to spend some of it here. Isn't that a great thing? People to get saved on their deathbed, they get to, they get to spend 30 seconds in, in, in their eternity, right there on the deathbed. I get to live right here. This is a part of my eternity, man. I get to be a part of the story. I get to... Yes, man. Because of the pains that we've gone through, he's given us the courage to be able to make change for the rest of our lives. Listen to me. They won't put a dash when we die, but a tsunami wave said we made a difference. There was an impact. There was a ripple effect that happened while we lived. Something happened, and it was due to the power of Christ in us. You can experience life that overcomes death. What are you scared about in the middle of the night? You going to die? So, would you say hello to Moses for me? Please, I'll mow your grass when I get there. If they have it, I'll mow it. It'd be my pleasure. Don't let the devil scare you no more. Get some courage. Courage, Latin word, French word meaning strength of heart. Amen? Amen. And number five, we'll lock it up. Get the musicians ready, please. You can experience purpose. Write this down. That replaces your emptiness. Go ahead forward. You can experience purpose purpose that replaces your emptiness. Did everybody get that? He says you can experience purpose that replaces your emptiness. How many of you ever felt that you were nothing? Devalued? I was told that you're just a Puerto Rican from North Philly. You ain't never going to be nothing. You're destined for prison or a shotgun or jail time. You know what I mean? So I always thought, I guess that's what we do. We go to what we, we get on welfare, then we get killed or go to jail. <laughs> You know, but right or wrong, anybody else, everybody put their hands down. As soon as I started mentioning evil things, everybody's saying, well, <laughs> you know, come on, has anybody ever been there? Well, you just, you just, just like, it's like, man, I've been empty, man. I felt devalued, like I'm nothing, like I'm worthless, like I'm stupid, like I'm not as smart as I should be, like I missed the boat, like my education is not there, like I could have been better, like, oh, I'm resentful. If I would have been born in a different place, a different time, different parents, different money, different color, different shape, I could have been different. Anybody ever feel like any of that? Uh, uh, come on now, right? Yes? And yet, look what it says. It says that knowing this truth, we can experience purpose that replaces our emptiness. Look what you're looking at. A Puerto Rican guy from North Philly that was a heroin addict for 14 and a half years went to the ninth grade and stuttered all his life. How do you explain that? Mm. I remember hearing the words, you should have been an abortion. Mm. We should have gotten a clothes hanger and yanked you out. That's my credit to my life. That's the high point of my life between the beatings. Are you following me? Think about that. You talk about feeling empty and devalued. You talk about feeling like nothing. You talk about feeling like, like nothing. I remember, I remember having oatmeal in the morning. And my daughter and them know that to this day, do I drink until after I'm done eating? Right? I, I, I will let my drink right there. I'm a 48-year-old man. My drink will be right there. If I go to your house, it's not that I'm a pig. It's just it's something in my brain that works a different way. You do not eat till after you're done completely eating. I used to get punched right in my mouth if I touch my drink. And I'd feel the red blood, just hot blood coming down. So I never drank till after I was done eating all my food. So if I go to your house, I made everything on the plate, and then I'll drink all the drink. See it? You talk about feeling empty and feeling like nothing? And yet, and yet, 
from a man who is empty, from a man who is nothing. Somehow all of you got here tonight to listen to me, didn't you? Is that proof that God can take your emptiness and turn it into usefulness because of what he did on the cross? You see, what he did on the cross was save a guy like me. He saved a man like me. And because of what he saved me from being living in an abandoned house, I felt so grateful to him. I felt so grateful that my tongue got loose and I began to speak. My brain got smart and what they said, I might have been a retard and something was wrong. Why would a young guy want to kill his brother all the time with a ball peen hammer and a knife? It was because that's what we did in North Philly was try to hurt each other. And after all these programs, now they look back and they look at me and they think, oh my goodness, he's so educated. His diction, his verbosity level is at a level where he could speak to doctors if he had to. And yet speak to the common man. Not speak to the brain, but speak to the heart. And folks, I'm not having a praise Jimmy party. I'm having a praise you party. You see, from your emptiness, God can make fullness. From the least that you think that you've been, from the worst experience you've been through, God can make the most impact. By nature, I should be, listen, I should be a pathological killer. And yet, I'm a passionate man of God. That's Jesus. Because Jesus can turn your emptiness into fullness. You just got to know the truth. This is what happened between Friday and Sunday. My Jesus went like a warrior and sent his army of angels to lead captivity captive. But my Jesus wasn't the, wasn't the king that sent his generals. He said, I got this one, guys. Stay behind. Are you all following me on this? You see, according to history, all the generals went and the king sat on his throne waiting for the word. When the, when the armies are just outside the town, call me and I'll go out and ride in with you. Oh, no, but not Jesus. Jesus said, angels, back away. Servants, back away. He said, this one is mine. He said, they're going to take me into that tomb. They're going to lock me away. They're going to wrap me around in 75 pounds of embalming fluid. And after they wrap me up, he says, I got some place to go. You think I'll be here and you're coming back to look for the body. He says, but I'll be gone because I got a mission to do. Between the times that you don't know, he said, I'm going to go lead captivity captive. Everything that has ever bound you, I'm going to tie it up and I'm going to bring it back and return it to you. I say, this is yours. What are you scared of? This is yours. Our king didn't wait for the generals to bring it back. Our king went and got it himself. He took the keys and said, give me them back. The keys to death and hell, give me that back. You ain't killing nobody no more. I don't want you to. Amen? Bow your heads, please. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the power to change, Lord. I thank you for what you've done for us, Lord, that you are our hero, Lord. You're my hero. You're my hero, oh Lord. I love you so much, God, for what you've done for me. Lord God, when I think about all the things that you've done in my life, when I think about all the transformation that you've done in my life, when I think about all this, this becomes more than just a club to me, more than just a nice place to meet nice people. This becomes my resting place. It becomes my refuge. It becomes my home. These believers are my cocoon where I change. These believers are the thread. These believers are the silk wrapped in the blood of Jesus that become the cocoon where I change. And folks, we need to help each other. Never leave anybody out. A caterpillar can transform in a cocoon, but a believer can only transform in a congregation. We need each other. Are those points on there? Is that high? Oh, no. It's okay. I know a place. Is that it? I 